I've lived in Tucson, Arizona for over 30 years. And I never tire of looking at the wonderful landscapes filled with majestic saguaro cacti. Before uh, discussing growing cacti from seeds, we should take a few minutes to look at some of these wonderful saguaro vistas. You know, saguaro cacti don't get their first arm until they're about 70 years old. Some lucky ones will live 150 to 200 years. They survive the dreadful summer heat and they can tolerate hard freezes for about a day. Average rainfall here is about 10 inches a year, but most of that rain falls during monsoons from June through September. It's pretty dry outside of that time. In many years, we'll get as low as six inches of rain for the whole year. They grow roots out to the sides, which are about as long as the saguaro is high. They're relatively shallow, and that aids in collecting surface water, because water doesn't sink too deep here. Chair cacti can store over a thousand gallons of water. That's just totally amazing. Some grow in very odd shapes, like this one here. That's a pretty picture of a saguaro in the Tortolita Preserve. Also in the Tortolita Preserve is this saguaro called the Strong Arm Saguaro. Here's a picture from 2020 of that cactus with my bike there for scale. Uh, it was during a ride in, uh, I think, either late 2020 or early 2021. This thing had 36 arms and is considered to be 150 to 175 years old. Unfortunately, less than two years after I took this picture, the saguaro collapsed in 2022. It had a runaway uh, bacterial infection that started about seven years earlier. Here's a pic of the rows of thorns that these cacti grow. And they're about two inches long and they're as hard as steel. So there's no hugging one of these without getting hurt. Lastly, before I leave the slideshow, here's a picture of a beautiful Arizona sunset with saguaros along the ridgeline in silhouette. Really stunning. So I have a saguaro that's probably 50 or 60 years old in the front yard. It started flowering for the first time, making the uh, fruit that had the seeds in them. So I thought, you know what? I'll harvest some of those seeds and see if I can grow them. This particular cactus is about 15 feet high, has no arms yet on it. So after these flower, about two months prior to monsoon season, which starts in June, they produce these fruit, which have seeds in them. If I'm gonna harvest them and try to grow them, I need to make sure that the seeds are fully developed. What happens is, just before monsoons, these split open and they have a purplish-reddish fruit inside of them. As soon as they split open, the birds start attacking them. They'll clean them out in a morning. So I thought, well, that's the time to do it. I'll wait for them to split. The birds start eating them, and then I'll get on a stepladder with a broom handle and I'll knock one off before the birds completely strip it. When I cleaned it out, I get this reddish paste sprinkled with these little seeds. And it's amazing, these tiny seeds make these huge cacti, which live for hundreds of years. So, of course, you have to look at them with a macro lens. There's a ruler here with one millimeter gradations. And you can see they're about two millimeters in length. And then I decided to go one step farther and use the stacking microscope at about 20 power. So... The width of this picture here is about two millimeters. This is what the surface of the seed looks like at 20 power. I heard when you plant the seeds, you should keep them mostly covered so it stays moist for the first couple of months. I originally tried using potting soil, and then I planted the seeds down about a sixteenth of an inch below. And then when you cover it and keep it moist, the mold took over. And so then I moved to cactus soil, just, you know, standard stuff you buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. Here's three weeks after the seeds were planted. You can see the little baby swirls coming up here. You can see some of the roots on this one, which was very close to the surface when it germinated. And you can see the little seed pod on some of them still stuck to the tops as they're growing. About one month old. 
they get greener and they look like these little hammer type structures and some have three structures on them. You know, nothing like the plant looks as an adult. I have to believe that if these sprout and the quail find them, they just gobble them up. So this is after about a month and a half. Nice view with a macro lens. You can see that the seed shells on some of them are still uh, stuck to the growing tips of these little swaros. And here you can see this, the faintest hint of the first spines. And after about three months, they fill in and the spines start to become more visible. Here, after eight months, this particular one was almost eight millimeters high. The spines are getting well formed. And you know what they say about watching grass grow? Watching swallows grow is way worse. <laughs> you wait a long time for not much of anything to happen. Nine months, they're a little more developed on top. Spines are a little thicker. Two years. So now they're. My tallest ones were about a centimeter and a half. Uh, they appeared to be getting enough water, which I had a problem with early on. I was severely underwatering them, but luckily I was able to save them. Enrico C. from Italy, who grows saguaros, he alerted me that I was underwatering them. And then when I sent him this picture, he said, you know, they look healthy, but these spines are way too small and thin, which means they're not getting enough light. So I then moved them to get more direct light. And in another two months, you can see that the spines have grown much thicker and much longer. So thanks to Enrico, I was able to save these guys. Here we are at three years. They're getting plenty of light and they're still green, which is good. Normally I kill plants that I try to grow. Somehow these things are surviving me. In 2020, about a month before monsoon started, I'll put them in separate pots and I'll move them outside. I had an old pallet sitting around, so I built this on a pallet and I put some hardware cloth on the side, some sunshade on the top, because I figured you're going to have to protect them from the birds, the lizards, whatever. It turns out that 2020 was one of the worst monsoons on record. We got very little rain. I think these plants got one day where they got a good dousing of rain, where they should have been getting it multiple times a week. So it was pretty tough going for them. We also had, I think, a record number of days over 105. What was going to be a really nice monsoon to get them going and really growing turned out to be a pretty stressful time for them, I'm sure. So I've been growing swirls from seeds for about six years now, and I've made three separate seedlings plantings along the way. With each planting I got smarter, figured out what didn't work the last time around or caused very slow growth and what did and I've just slowly improved on the process. So I'm going to take a little time out here before the rest of the video to show what lessons I've learned along the way and if anyone wants to try growing these from seeds uh, maybe this will be helpful. I found first that they're very easy to germinate even seeds two to three years old, you'll get 85 to 95 percent germination rate. Use cactus soil, not potting soil, because the potting soil will get moldy early on when you have to keep them sealed. And plant them about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch deep and plant the seeds with a few inches of spacing around each rather than just sowing them randomly because then you've got to try to transplant them when they're really small. The germination rate is high enough that you can space them out and most of them will come up. I tried using natural soil from the yard, but it just turned into cement, so <laughs> that didn't work. So at this early stage, you got to keep the soil moist pretty much continuously. Place a translucent cover with just a little bit of ventilation in it, and the cover keeps the air humidified and give them indirect sunlight for a good fraction of the day. They love sunlight. After about two months, I placed them in a windowsill with at least a half a day of good direct sunlight. I keep the soil moist. I place a translucent cover with a little bit better ventilation. It keeps the air humidification high, but then allows them to dry out between waterings. You want them to dry out for at least a few days before you sprinkle in some more water. And since you have a cap on it, you don't have to put much water in the soil, just dampen it. After about a year, I think you should consider planting them in separate small pots because their roots start getting big and they'll start filling in the couple inch gap between seedlings. Again, keep the soil moist with periods of drying. Place 
translucent tops on the pots with a little bit better ventilation, but enough to just kind of keep the air inside. I still keep them indoors on the windowsill with plenty of direct sunlight. Plants should be about as wide as they are tall and the spine should be thick and long. Use plastic pots as the clay pots make the soil dry out very quickly. And then after about two years, they should be pushing about one inch high and almost as wide as they are high. And at this point, you can consider them moving them outdoors if you live in the Sonoran Desert. You gotta build something that keeps them well protected from the birds, the lizards, and the rats. And put them in a location that gets plenty of direct sunlight for at least half the day. I put a garden shade cloth over the whole structure that they're in because they're usually growing under a nursery, which provides partial shade. Pots dry out quickly, so in the summer yeah, you're looking at watering about once a week. In the winter, every two weeks to a month. The bigger they get, the more water they can store and the easier they can survive the dry spells. Maybe cover them in the winter for hard freezes, 28 degrees Fahrenheit or below but I find that the shade cloth over them seems to be enough to protect them from the frost. Then after two to three years, I plant them in larger pots, about seven, eight inches in diameter, because remember they grow roots out to the side and they do not grow an aggressive tap root. Those roots will still go down pretty deep. At this point, they don't need a cover on the pot and just continue to keep them watered well. Personally, I don't plan to plant them in the yard till they're about 10 years old. You know, some general things that I've seen along the way, if they turn purple, red, black, I have found that they're just not getting enough water. And once you fix this, they'll come back real nicely. And if the spines are very thin and thread-like or spindly, you need more sunlight. They should have spines, you know, approaching half of their height when they're real young. I collect rainwater and I water them with rainwater. And that's it for my lessons learned. Here we are in 2022. I've uh, moved most of them to larger pots. The first batch over here is the one started in 2016. They are six and a half years old. And at six and a half years old, my my highest ones are about, you know, just the body is about 70 millimeters. So I have about three at 70 and then they get smaller. You can see there's quite a range. There's one like this guy and it goes all the way down to, you know, one that's about 30 millimeters. Then we look at the group started in 2019. These guys are three and a half years old. They're doing pretty well. They certainly are as big as my smaller 2016 ones. So that's a good sign. I guess I'm getting a little better at doing things. And then here are the ones that were started in 2021. And I got a nice uh, surprise. Uh, in 2022, a few new ones popped up. So they're only about two months old. And we'll take another look through them. So these are three and a half at about 40 millimeters. And these guys are six and a half and the biggest ones are at about 70. It does take a, <laughs> a long time to grow them. Uh, but they're starting to look pretty nice. And I have uh, what do I have about five, six more in the small pots that I still have to plant in the larger pots. But once they get, you know, over an inch in height and diameter, I'm finding that I can get the, the drink cup humidifying domes off of them and they're big enough that they can store enough water now to make it. These guys are still in the house. Here's my uh, small ironwood tree that I'm going to be planting. I thought it'd be useful to show how root-bound the uh, swarrows were at six and a half years old in these small pots. So you can see that they definitely need larger pots now. You got the roots growing all the way down to the bottom and roots around the side. I thought it might be worthwhile to show the saguaro that's the mother of all the seedlings that I've planted. She's about 
20 feet high now, no arms. It was one of the first years that uh, she started producing flowers and seeds that I got uh, my first batch of seeds. And then we've got another one growing here, which is about you know, four and a half feet high. As long as I'm out here, I found a group of natural baby swaros, and they're growing under this Palo Verde nurse tree. So we'll try the biggest one here, which is pretty nice. About uh, 15 centimeters. <laughs> they grew out here for years. I never saw them till last year. And uh, we've got one here. So it's possible that it started growing about when I started growing saguaros or a little bit uh, thereafter. And that guy is a good 40 millimeters high. Here's one over here, which is about 50 millimeters high. And then next to this Arizona fish hook. It's a very tiny one, still alive. And then in the intervening year, I happened to notice that in this lantana, which is just about dead right now because it just hasn't received enough rain to revive itself, which is too bad because that's a big lantana, there's another one growing. So that's, uh, that's actually uh, pretty nice that they do actually grow <laughs> naturally and there's been some pretty serious drought years except for 2021 where we had a really huge monsoon. When I was talking to one of my friends, Blaine O, he actually found this paper it was written by Joshua Conver et al. In 2012, they surveyed what they call Section 17 in the Saguaro National Park. That was first surveyed in 1941. In this paper, they printed an equation from a paper by Steenberg and Lowe in 1977, which expresses the height of a saguaro in centimeters versus its age in years. The equation is for saguaros growing naturally in the Sonoran Desert. This equation also allows the survey researchers to measure the heights of the saguaros they find and then estimate the age of the saguaro and hence the approximate year it germinated. It also allows me to see how my saguaro growth compares to that of naturally occurring saguaros in the Tucson area. So I have plotted the equation here with the blue line. The horizontal axis shows the age of the saguaro in years. The vertical axis shows the height of the saguaro in centimeters. The saguaro heights I started in 2016 are shown with the orange stars. The ones in 2019 are shown with the blue stars. And the ones started in 2021 are shown in green. I note two things. One, that my newer seedlings are benefiting from my fixing the mistakes I made with the first batch. The second thing is how well they all track the basic shape of the Steenberg and Lowe curve. I also note that the 15 centimeter high saguaro that I found growing naturally in my yard that I showed earlier is about 10 years old. One interesting result from the saguaro east section desert surveys is the estimated number of saguaros that germinated in a given year over the last hundred years. And that's shown here. The vertical axis is the estimated germination date and the horizontal axis is the number of saguaros found. You can see there was an explosion of germinations in the mid 70s to the early 90s. The 1940s and the 50s weren't as good while estimates prior to 1940 probably suffer from attrition. It'll be interesting to see if subsequent surveys find a high germination rate from the enormous amount of rain we got in 2021. Well, I hope you found this video interesting, and I do appreciate you watching it. Thanks, and take care.